अपना जो चाहिए तो जनरल डायग्नोसिस पार्ट ऑफ इन द पैरासाइटोलॉजी इन विच वी विल सी हाउ द वी विल सी द ओवर व्यू ऑफ द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ द पैरासाइटोलॉजिकल इन्फेक्शन हाउ विल वी अप्रोच टू डायग्नोज अ पैरासाइटिक इन्फेक्शन इन अवन बॉडी सो इन एनी पैरासाइटिक इन्फेक्शन द फर्स्ट थिंग वी वॉन्ट टू गेट इज द स्पेसिमेंट and the most of the time in the parasitic infections the specimen is the fecal matter okay so the most commonly uh, um, obtained specimen in case of parasitological lab diagnosis is the stool sample okay and that stool sample is collected in the clean wide mouthed screw capped container before starting the anti parasitic drugs so in viva also you are being asked by the examiner like what type of container will you use for the collection of the stool sample okay so then you have to tell these three adjectives clean wide mouthed and screw capped container okay these three adjectives should must be told to the examiner the next question the examiner will ask you in the on the viva table will be what will be your sample size then you have to say that the sample size will be equal to the size of the thumb then the next question will be uh, how many uh, number of specimens you will collect for sending to the laboratory so you will say that we will collect three samples at least to be sent to the uh, to the laboratory and those three samples should be collected on alternate day not on the same day okay they should be collected on the alternate day and all these three samples should be collected within 10 days then the next question uh, the examiner will ask is how will you store suppose the laboratory is closed on that day so how will you store that specimen so then you have to answer that uh Uh, um, ideally, the sample should be examined within one hour. But if there is delay, if the laboratory is closed on that day, then you can keep the stool sample in ten percent formalin. Okay, you can keep the specimen in ten percent formalin. Why? Why? Then he will ask why will you keep it? Uh, why you are choosing ten percent formalin? Then your answer will be because that ten percent formalin will maintain the morphology of the cyst and the eggs of the parasites okay the cysts of the uh, protozoa and the eggs of the helminths they will the morphology of them will be maintained and as the morphology will be maintained then we will have an easy uh, that will be a easy task to diagnose the parasite if the morphology has been maintained based on the shape size and all characteristic of the egg or the cyst we can diagnose the parasite Okay, so these all are the potential viva questions on the viva table by the examiner. Uh, if uh, the question is about the parasite uh, diagnosis uh, in the parasitology. Next, uh, what we do in the parasitology, in almost all the cases of the parasitological lab diagnosis, is the microscopic examination. So, in microscopic examination, we do uh, we prepare two types of wet mount. Okay. those two types of wet mounts are the direct saline wet mount and the iodine wet mount both of them has different characteristic and uh, different advantages of their own uh, so that's why we prefer both of them both uh, type of uh, exam uh, both type of wet mounts are prepared so what happens in the direct saline wet mount is that a drop of saline is taken on a slide and a small amount of stool equal to the size of head of matchstick about 2 mg they will ask this also like how how much amount of the stool you, you will take to prepare the wet mount so it is equal to the size of head of a match stick that is equal to almost about 2 mg okay and it is mixed with the saline and then we place the cover slip over on the mount and it is examined under the low power objective lenses so if we uh, the x can be seen under 10x uh, magnification while the cyst to see the cyst and the trophozoites you have to use the 40x 40x uh, magnification now what are the uh, organism which can be seen under the direct saline wet mount so they are the entamoeba histolytica and the giardia lamblia because they are motile 
trophozoites so motile trophozoites in case of them can be seen in the stool sample after preparing of the direct saline weight mount also the eggs of the helminths can also be seen through this method next is the iodine weight mount so in iodine weight mount the process is same a drop of leucose iodine is taken instead of saline as uh, as saline was taken in case of the saline weight mount but in case of iodine weight mount we have to take the leucose iodine on a slide and a small amount of stool again about 2 mg is mixed with that our slip is placed and examined under the low power microscope here also the nuclear details of the protozoan cyst and the helminthic eggs can be visualized so what is the uh, importance of different importance of the saline mount and the iodine mount on their own so saline mounts in the saline mount we can see the motility that is an advantage of the saline mount that we can see the motility in case of saline mount but motility cannot be visualized in iodine mount bile stand property of the x can be visualized in the saline mount but this is not possible in case of the iodine mount so what is the importance of iodine mount the importance is that the internal details are better visualized in iodine mount but the internal details are not better visualized not visualized in the saline mount so that is the importance of the iodine mount while well, these two are the importance of the saline mount okay so that is the difference between the saline mount and the iodine mount other thing what we can do for microscopy is the permanent stand smear we can prepare permanent stand smear this is done for preservation of the slides okay so stool smear is uh, stained with the iron hematoxylin stain or the trichom stain these are the permanent stains permanent stains sometimes this is as in mcq as well what is the permanent stain it is the iron hematoxylin stain or the trichom stain okay or the trichom stain so this is used for the trophozoites and the cyst of the protozoans to preserve them okay so for preserving them we use the permanent stain smear like iron hematoxylin or the trichrome stain then we come to the concentration methods okay so there are different concentration methods by which we can concentrate the eggs or the cyst and thereby we can detect the cyst or the eggs so first uh, one is the saturated salt solution or the protection method so in saturated salt solution method 2 ml of the salt solution is taken and 1 gram of stool is mixed in it then a flat bottom tube is filled up to the brim with the salt solution and a slide is placed over it so you suppose if this is the test tube this is the flat bottom test tube we fill it we fill it up to the brim here and then we place a and then we place a slide over the uh, uh, over that test tube and after 20 to 30 seconds the slide is removed without jerking and then examined under mic so it will be uh, uh, is, uh, removed in this way okay without jerking it will be the slide is removed from the um, from the test tube after 20 to 30 seconds so uh, by by uh, and that then that slide is examined under the microscope so by this method what are the uh, uh, organisms which can be detected so th this salt saturated salt solution method can be used for the diagnosis uh, i mean uh, by this method we can see the eggs of the nematodes and the un uh, and the uh, eggs of the nematodes can only be seen okay like the round worm eggs of the round worm round uh, eggs of the hookworm and the eggs of the worm. but we cannot see the unfertilized eggs of the Ascaris lumbricoid. This is the potential MCQ. Okay, we in the saturated salt solution method, we cannot see the unfertilized eggs of the Ascaris lumbricoids because they do not float in the saturated salt solution, rather, they sink. Okay, their density is more, so they sink. And that's but the eggs of the roundworm, eggs of the hookworm, eggs of the whipworm, they can be seen uh, as they float on the surface in the saturated salt solution uh, because their density is less than the saturated salt solution so they float and that's why they can be detected but unfertilized egg has a higher density so it sinks and hence it cannot be detected next comes the zinc sulfate centrifugal flotation method 
the principle is similar okay this is also based on the principle of density so in zinc sulfate centrifugal flotation method centrifugal flotation method one gram of feces is mixed with 10 ml of water and then this suspension is passed through a gauge to remove the particles from the suspension and then the liquid is collected in a test tube and then centrifuged then after centrifugation the supernatant what we give uh, what we get that supernatant is removed and again water is added to make the suspension and again centrifuge so this process of centrifugation and removal of supernatant is continued okay till the supernatant becomes clear so once the supernatant uh, water becomes clear so suppose if this is a test tube and we are getting the debris here and the supernatant is here we remove the supernatant again add fresh water and again we centrifuge again remove the uh, supernatant again add the fresh water and we will continue the process until this supernatant becomes clear okay so until it becomes clear we will continue this process of centrifugation and removal of supernatant and then once the clear supernatant is removed the clear supernatant is removed again we will remove the clear supernatant from air and we add the zinc sulfate solution which has a specific gravity of 1.18 and make a suspension again add zinc sulfate solution up to brim and centrifuge so we again add and uh, zinc sulfate solution and up to the brim we will add the zinc sulfate solution with the help of a wired loop we will take the sample from the surface and transfer to the slide and examine under the microscope okay then we have the so uh, we then we'll examine under the microscope by that matter what are the uh, eggs what we can which we can uh, detect so we can detect the eggs of the nematodes except the unfertilized eggs of the ascaris lumbricoides and eggs of the tinea solium uh, also the protozoan cysts can be detected so protozoan cysts can be detected by this zinc sulfate centrifugal flotation method but it was not detected by the saturated salt solution method again here unfertilized eggs of the ascaris lumbricoides cannot be detected but the eggs of the nematodes can be detected and also the eggs of the tinea solium is detected but not the eggs of the tinea saginata okay not the eggs of the tinea saginata this is also a mcq by zinc sulfate centrifugal flotation method you cannot detect the tinea saginata egg but you can detect the tinea solium egg okay then the next flotation and uh, the next uh, concentration method what we have is the formal ether sedimentation method in which we have the eggs and the cyst settle down at the bottom of the tube wet mount is prepared and examined okay and all protozoan cysts and the helminthic eggs can be detected by this formal ether sedimentation method this is a very important point for this formal ether sedimentation method that all protozoan cysts and all helminthic eggs can be detected by the formal ether sedimentation method whatever it may be whether it is a uh, uh, unfertilized eggs of ascaris lumbricoides or the egg of the uh, or the any protozoan cyst everything can be detected by this formal ether sedimentation method no it is not like those formal uh, not like those uh, zinc sulfate centrifugal flotation method or uh, the salt saturation method okay saturated salt solution method okay so this is a very important method formal ether sedimentation method is very very important method you can detect anything any helminthic egg or any protozoan cyst the technique is again that we take the technique is that we take one gram of feces is mixed with 10 ml of water and the large particles uh, sediment okay and then collect the supernatant and centrifuges after centrifugation discard supernatant add the formal saline wait for 10 minutes then again add 3 ml ether and ethyl acetate as, as it is not inflammable as ether so preferred okay so earlier we were using the ether but now we are using ethyl acetate why because ether was inflammable ether was inflammable but the ethyl acetate is not inflammable that's why we are not using the uh, ethyl acetate now uh, i mean we are using ethyl acetate now ether is not preferred now okay then we centrifuge it and after centrifugation we get this okay after centrifugation we get 
this what is there so this is uh, this uh, different parts are uh, classified i mean different parts are separated based on their density the sediment is at the base the formal saline comes in the middle the debris at the uh, at the upper part and ether and the ethyl acetate comes in the super, superior part so these four layers are sometimes asked by the old examiners also okay so you must remember all these four layers the top layer is of ether ethyl acetate uh, layer of then, uh, then there is a layer of debris then there is layer of formal saline layer and then, then there is sediment uh, at the bottom then we discard the top three layers okay so those top three layers are discarded and this sediment is used to prepare the saline wet mount and iodine wet mount and then that is examined under the microscope so this is the method of the this is the method of the our formal ether saline method flotation uh, sedimentation method okay formal ether sedimentation method then we have the duodenal capsule technique this is also called as the intero test or the string test what do we do in that so it is a test to detect the parasite which reside in the upper part of the gi tract like uh, in the duodenum so this is used for detection of the parasites such as giardia lambda strong loides and the cryptosporidium so you must remember these are only three organisms which can be detected by this intero test or by this duodenal capsule technique okay this may be asked as mcq as well so the, what, what is the technique of this duodenal capsule so the technique is that uh, a capsule is taken which is uh, which is, uh, which contains the coiled thread inside it with the free end outside the capsule okay the free end is attached to the cheek outside okay and then the gelatin capsule is dissolved in this and then the patient is asked to swallow that gelatin capsule keeping the one free end of the uh, uh, of the thread outside on the sticking to the cheek so as the gelatin capsule is um, taken in it dissolves in the stomach and the coiled thread reaches to the duodenum due to peristalsis movement and after four hours the thread is removed it is taken in the saline and wet mount is prepared from that saline and then it is examined under the microscope by this method we can detect giardia lamblia cryptosporidium and the strong hyloidus tarcolaris these only three organisms can be detected by this duodenal method then we have the serology serology can be used in only certain organisms so where antibody detection test is important we use the serum and for detecting antigen also we will use the serum only so antibody detection test can be uh, useful in the visceral leishmaniasis lymphatic filariasis cysticercosis and the hydatid disease while well, the antigen detection test is important in amoebiasis, malaria and lymphatic filariasis. Once you remember all this, it becomes very important to read the uh, diagnosis of different organisms. Okay. So just remembering the general uh, diagnosis part of the parasitology, the diagnosis of individual organisms becomes very easy. Okay. You, you can write the same points and in the similar manner then we have the molecular methods also this molecular method you can write in everywhere okay so molecular methods are like we have the first method pcr and the real time pcr which can be used for detection of the different parasites and there is also biofire film array this is a new method uh, which is autosomal multiplex nested pcr okay uh, which is produced by the biomary x and this is its gastrointestinal panel is used for detection of the parasitic infection it has many panels like respiratory panel and gastrointestinal panel okay similarly there are many panels so based uh, and those panels are used for different infections so this is all about the general diagnosis part of the parasitology we will see about the uh, diagnosis indivi of individual organisms but after reading this all general parasitology the reading of the uh, individual uh, diagnosis of individual organisms becomes very easy you can easily write the answers of the diagnosis lab diagnosis of the parasitic infections